now that we have an idea of how this works, let's jump over to a blank project and start working on our version. So the first thing our program needs to do is actually get that initial information from the user. And in order to do that, we're going to import the scanner class. So to do that, we'll do import java.util.scanner. And now we're going to create a scanner object that we can use in our code. So I'm going to call mine console. And we're just going to set this equal to a new scanner that takes in system.in. This will just allow us to interact with the user. Now let's ask the user for the first piece of information. Um, we'll use a print statement to print out what we want to say. And we'll just ask the user how wide their maze is. So now we want to store their response inside of a variable. So I'm going to make an integer variable to store the width of the maze. And in order to get the user's response, we'll use console.nextline. The problem here is that console.nextline actually gives us a string, and we want an integer. So in order to deal with that, we can use a function called integer.parseInt. That will just take in the string and return the integer equivalent. Now we just want to do almost the same thing, but for the height of our maze. So again, I'll use a print statement to tell the user what we want. And now we'll store inside of a variable their response as an integer. Now, the next thing that we want to do is actually set up what we're going to be using to store the maze in our code. We're going to use a 2D array, which is essentially just an array of arrays. That means for each element in our outer array, it's actually going to be another array that stores all of the characters for a row in our maze. The way that I'm going to set this up is I'm going to define a variable called maze. And I'll set it equal to a new 2D character array. The nice thing is because the user has specified the dimensions of our maze, we can use that to set up a 2D array of the correct size. So inside of this first bracket, I'll put height, and I'll specify the width inside of the next one. Now let's just ask the user to actually enter their maze. We know that we want them to use asterisks for walls, faces for open space, I for the start, and O for the end. And we should remind them to please not have any dead ends and only have one solution. Now that that's done, we want to start actually filling up our 2D array with whatever the user types in. Since we know exactly how many rows and how many columns there are going to be in our 2D array, we can use for loops to ask for exactly the right input from our user. Let's start by going through the number of lines we want, which is just going to be equal to the number of rows or the height of our 2D array. Now, for each row, I want to ask the user to input a line. So again, we can use console.nextLine to get that input from the user, and I'm going to store that inside of a string variable. Now, for each element inside of this string, for each character, we want to put that into our array. So I'm going to use another for loop to go through that character by character. Now what we're going to do is we want the element in the ith row and the jth column to be equal to whatever the jth element in the line that the user typed in is. So we can do that using the method char at. So now at the end of this for loop, our 2D array should be filled up with whatever the user typed in. 
So all we need to do now is set up our print statement to output the solution. So now the problem is we haven't actually solved for the solution yet. So let's go ahead and create a method that will solve for the solution for us. We want this method to output a string because the solution is basically just a list of characters, which in this case will represent as a string. I'll call the method solve maze and we'll have it take in our 2D character array, um, the width and the height. Now, in order to solve our maze, the first thing we're actually going to have to do is find the starting location. We need to figure out where in this maze we actually start. So in order to do that, I'm going to start by just creating two variables to keep track of where that location might be. For right now, I'll set them equal to negative one. Now, we want to search through our 2D array. We can use the same kind of structure that we used to actually fill up that array in the first place. So I'll use a for loop to go through row by row, and then we'll use another loop inside of that to go through the columns. Now we know that to access you know, the element in the maze at the i row in the jth column, we can use this notation. But we want to see if this element is actually equal to our starting position. So in order to do that, we can use an if statement to check to see if this character is equal to our capital I. If that's the case, then what we want to do is just set start x and start y to the correct numbers. So start x is going to be j, right, because j is which column we're at, and start y is just going to be i. Now let's say the user, for whatever reason, didn't actually enter a starting character. Well, there's no way for us to actually solve the maze if there's no start. So it's worth checking to see if we found a start before we actually start walking through the maze. We know if we didn't find a start, start x and start y are still both going to be negative 1. So let's write an if statement to see if that's true. So here I'll write if start x is equal to negative 1 or if start y is equal to negative 1. So if that's the case, then what we probably want to do is let the user know that something is wrong. So I'll say no start found. And we want to return that there is no solution. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's actually write the code so that we can walk through the maze and figure out the path through this maze. The first thing that we want to do is probably store whatever our current location in the maze is going to be. That way, as we walk through the maze, we can change that and it'll be like we're kind of navigating through this 2D space. I'm going to set these variables equal to whatever our starting position is, because that's where we're going to have to start as we're walking through the maze. I'm also going to make another variable to store our path so that as we walk through the variable, we can store in the string the directions that we've gone. So now, what kind of loop do you think we're going to use to navigate through this maze? Since we don't actually know how many steps it will take to find the solution, a for loop doesn't make much sense. Okay, what we really want to do is keep taking steps until we find something that is the output character. So basically, we want to keep taking steps as long as we haven't found the output character yet. And that makes perfect sense for a while loop. So let's set up a while loop so that as long as our current location in the maze isn't equal to that output character, we want to keep walking through it. So now what we want to do is when we're at our current position, we essentially want to look in each direction and see whether or not there's a wall, because we're going to want to move where there isn't a wall. 
So first, let's check to see if we can move down. If we're moving down, we're going to be increasing our y coordinate by one, right? Because our y index starts at zero and gets bigger as you move down. So let's write an if statement to see if that's true. Another thing we have to check is we want to make sure that we don't go out of bounds. So before we do any kind of indexing, we want to make sure that current y plus one is still less than our height. That's true. We also want to make sure that current y plus one doesn't contain a wall element. So let's make sure that in our maze, current y plus one and the same x, because we're not moving diagonally, let's make sure that that's not equal to a wall character. So if that's the case, then we probably want to move down. So let's add the appropriate character to our path and change our y, our current y, to reflect the movement in that direction. Now that we've done that, let's check to see if we can move right instead. So if that didn't work, then we'll check to see if we can move right. So moving right is kind of like what we did for y, but with the x direction instead. So first we have to make sure that current x isn't going out of bounds. So we make sure that it's less than our width. And then we want to make sure that it's not a wall character that we're going into. So it's going to be same y position and current x plus 1. Now that that's been done, let's just update our path accordingly and our current x position. So if that doesn't work, maybe we want to try moving left instead. So if we're moving left, instead of adding to our x position, we want to be subtracting from it. So let's make sure that current x minus 1 is still in bounds. Instead of checking to see if it's less than width, this time we want to make sure it's greater than or equal to 0, because all indices have to be positive. Let's also check to make sure that we don't run into another wall character. So if that's the case, our path is going to have another L, and we're going to subtract one from our X position. Now, finally, we want to see if we need to move up. So that's going to be the same kind of thing, but with our Y position. So let's make sure that it's in bounds and that we don't run into an asterisk. And then we can update our path and our position. And now, just to be safe, let's throw in an else, right? What if the user didn't actually give us an output character or we get stuck in a dead end? If that's the case, then we probably want to tell the user that something wrong, right? We won't be able to go down or right or left or up. So we'll print out, could not solve the maze. Maybe a dead end. And we'll return that there's no solution for this maze. Now, if we've tried all these options and eventually we get through our while loop, that means that we've found the output and we want to return our path because that's the solution to our maze. Now, if we go back up to our main, we can add solve maze over here and make sure we pass it in the correct variables. And now we can run our program and see if there's any errors that we have to fix. Ah, I forgot to put a semicolon next to this print statement. Let's see if there's anything else. Good, let's see if the program works. So we'll use one of the example mazes. OK, 
Okay, let's make sure that's right. Perfect. It told us to go down, down, left, and then down. Let's try the other example maze and make sure that it works. So this time we'll do four, four, and this one was I over here, then an O, and then it was all asterisks. Perfect, so we go right, down, and then right twice. So that's how we write this program. I hope that you learned something today, and I hope you enjoyed making it. I know.